Where's the beers? Hey. Hi, Dan. Hey, mate. How you doing? Not bad, not bad. That was a, an interesting but kind of weird fight, right? Like you started off sort of measured on the feet and then he started throwing himself at your legs. At that point, did you sort of know he doesn't want this on the feet and he kind of is almost... Oh, lit. once he like actually got to the legs and, and I could feel how much energy that he was burning out trying to finish me. Um, and then once that like didn't get pulled off, you could feel the desperation in him. So I just knew... And it's like anything, when someone's, uh, when someone's hurt, that's when they're most dangerous. So I knew if I just stayed composed, like I've got, I've got, um, I've got the skills to like pick them apart and take them away. I, I, I said that leading into the fight, that I'm just a class above him, and I stay composed and pick them apart, and, and it just played out how I thought it would. Obviously, this one's a win. The last couple didn't go your way. I don't know if you want to share like, how much that was actually weighing on you before this fight, if you always knew that you were going to be good and show it eventually, or how, how refreshing is it and how f cool is it to have a win right now and how are you feeling about it? Yeah, it was, um, that was, that was special to me. That was special to me to obviously like prove it to everyone and stuff like that, but it was special to me um, because I did take everything for granted. I took going to the gym every day for granted. I took being surrounded by my training partners and, and the best coaches in the world, I took, it, I took it for granted. I can openly and honestly admit that. And it's not till I had those people taken away from me and I was out there on my own and stuck away from them and doing it under those circumstances um, that I realized how much those people truly meant to me. So I feel like everyone I talked to could get the sense for how... Um, how, like I was loving it. I was loving this training camp. Like Eugene said that he, he was pushing us hard and this and that and kicking us up the ass and I loved every second of it every second I walked in the gym and he says you're shit you're not going good and like I, I, absolutely, knife. I absolutely loved it pull the knife all you want but like, um, I, I can't wait like for someone to be there like I appreciated it so much that someone cares that they're gonna go like absolutely out of their way to push me to my absolute limits like I loved every second of it so I appreciated having them around so much more so that's why you could see me out there today um, like having so much fun that's just like sheer appreciation for my team sheer appreciation for my coaches sheer appreciation for all the people around me that so love and support me like that's um, yeah I'm a, I'm a dangerous man when I'm happy and true to form, you made your, your next move clear. You want to fight in Perth in February. You said you'll fight anyone on, on the planet. Um, let's try and <laughs> keep it to 150. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, Moicano was back here and he said he thinks it makes sense to fight you, but he would rather do it in Brazil, not in Perth. Oh, cool. Like. <laughs> that's a, uh, he said he was scared of the crocodiles. Scared of the crocodiles. Well, that's a shit excuse. But um, look, like that's the day... Uh, somewhere close to home I feel like I deserve to, to fight on the first card back down my ways like, I feel like I've done enough um, to earn a spot on that card I said absolutely anyone that wants to come there and fight on that date and like I'll, I'll be there with my training partner Alexander Volkanovsky it'll be good to prepare um, with him for that date for that card so it's like any man for that that date I don't think that makes it does I, th You'll I, th fight I don't think he's agreeing to the. No. I don't think he's agreeing to the proposal. Congratulations! It's a very simple proposal. <laughs> I, Dan, okay. I think his one of his main reasons was I don't think one of his coaches can get into Australia. What do you do? Nah, nah, I'm joking. <laughs> I don't want to ask. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, where does this fight rank in terms of your past wins, giving everything that led up to this? Yeah, it's just special. It's special that everything's come together. You know, you you um, you learn something from every time you walk out there. That was my twentieth. Um, I'm pretty sure <laughs> that's my twentieth walk to the octagon, and you learn something every time you go out there. You know, and and I feel like everything's just come into place. I've just um, figured out the recipe for me and my success, and so it's so good to have that recipe now moving forward. You know. As I said, like um, these are all like all the all the um, flaws and holes in my game were were um, being masked by great coaching and great training partners and a great team. And when those were taken away from me, those flaws shone through. 
So now that I have that, all, I, like, I went away and those were exposed and I fixed all of those mental and physical flaws. So now to have fixed those flaws, to have all of those back, to have my coaches back, to have my team back, um, man, I'm, I'm so dangerous moving forward. So that's why I didn't go out there and call a name. I called it they, the best man, the best name that puts his hand up for that date is going to get it. I will fight absolutely anyone. The best guy, just like I have my entire career, I want to fight the best. The best guy that puts his hand up for that date, not a different date, is going to get it. And I hate to bring it up, but were you, did you watch uh, Brad's fight, and what did, was it difficult at all to switch back into your fight mode? Um, it's a tough game. It's a tough game. I've come off second best um, a bunch of times, and it's not. He's a tough guy, too. He'll be back. Like He'll learn from me. He'll grow, and, and he'll be back. He's in the right place. He's surrounded by the right people that can... Um, figure out the steps to move forward. So that's why I didn't, like, throw me off. I didn't absorb that too much. Just, it's the game we play. It ain't it ain't cricket. And then you came in after the, the Dustin Chandler fight. Did you get to watch any of it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I caught it. I caught it. It's a, that's a wild fight. That's the level of guys that excites me. You know what I mean? That's the level of guys. Um, I said it going in. You, you like, uh, going forward, poof. You want to give me another unranked guy? I'm more than happy. I'm more than happy to fight another unranked guy. I told you that I was going to go out there and make him look silly. Like, you give me another unranked guy, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to make... If you want me to keep going out there making people look silly and paying me this much money, like, I'm in. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, that's the guy that I should be competing against. That's my level. And um, I, will, I will fight anyone until I can prove that that's where I belong. Hey, Dan, back here. Congratulations on the win. And in that fight, uh, going into the fight, was your strategy just cook them, sm uh, slow burn, be patient? And at any point of the fight, uh, once again, because uh, coming off of uh, two losses, uh, at any point of the fight did you feel any type of desperation, like, oh, I, uh, maybe I can rush opportunities, create opportunities? Like, what was your mind state going in there and strategy going in there? Nah, stay cool. That's, like, the benefit of having it done so many times that I've been through um, I've been through those wars. I've been through those desperate moments. So I can um, – I, I know how to avoid them for myself, and I know how to recognize them in other people. You know what I mean? Because I've – I've been there before, so I can recognize it. So that's what I recognized. I, I recognized he's, he's going to get desperate now like, yeah. because I've been desperate in fights before. And, and it's only from that experience that you can um, truly, truly recognize that. Cool. Uh, so obviously Michael Chandler and Dustin Poirier put on a banger of a fight. Um, obviously uh, the Dan Hooker that fought tonight is a bad mofo. Uh, would you want to get the uh, you know uh, Dustin Poirier maybe a rematch with him or Chandler or? Uh, that's kind of why I set the date and I didn't call a name because I want to see I want to see who the fans think I should be fighting. You know what I mean? I, I wanna I will I'm happy to answer all of these questions until the fans say all right that's enough. I want to see him fight. Gotcha. Dustin Poirier, oh, okay, yeah, I'm sick of him doing this now. I want to see him fight Michael Chandler. Like, I'm not going to call for any of these names. I think, I think everyone knows that whole fight. Anyone. So I'm not going to sit here and call. We could sit here for hours of you chucking names at me and me saying, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> of course, you know what I mean? But um, I'll, I'll set my intentions. I'm happy to let the fans decide who comes next. Gotcha. Uh, Congratulations Dan. on the win. I'll see you at the after party. Thank you. Thank you. Dan, oh, see me Dan I'll do right. Uh, I asked this question to your teammate, Brad Riddell, earlier. I'm going to ask again. It was announced today that uh, your teammate, Alex Volkanovski, is getting the title shot against Islam Markashev, moving up in weight class, moving into your weight class. Does that complicate things for you? No, nah, not at all. Like that's, um, that's like a funny thing about me. I want to see everyone win. That's, um, that's why you can't beat me. That's why you can't beat me. You, know, you, you beat me, you only make me better. You only make me stronger. i got to say in blood. Um, and it's that circumstance, like, I want to see everyone win. That's hard for people to fathom, and that's why it's, like, strange for me to see. Like, I want to see Alex win the title, but I want to see I want to see Islam have success in his career. I want to see Chandler have success in his career. I want to see Poor. Like, I want, I want them all to have success. That's, like, that's a funny thing for people to understand. Um, but, of course, like, it's, it's not difficult. It's... it's um, yeah, I want nothing but success for Alexander Volkanovsky. We'll cross, a br we'll cross bridges when we cross bridges. Dan in the back here. 
Uh, you're very much like a bite down in your mouthpiece and, and swing kind of fighter. Uh, is it frustrating for you when your opponent doesn't want to engage in, in any type of strike and just keeps pulling guard? Um, I anticipated that and I knew that I would just have to stay composed and it would be a matter of time. So, um, yeah, composed Dan Hooker's, uh, that's a, that's a, that's a new, that's a new unlocked character. <laughs> and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looked towards the end of the first round when he pulled guard after you know X amount of time. Uh, you almost like pointed at him and like said something or pointed to the ref. Do you remember what, you, what that was? Yeah, I was going to start making fun of him if he kept doing it. <laughs> I was going to say like, I was actually just starting to feel my like I was starting to get into the groove and starting to feel myself. I think the fans were doing it more than anything. The fans are going like I think they I think the fans started to. You're a pussy. Like, that's what they started. I was like, well, it's about early days. Like, let's get... But by, like, the 20th one, I was just, like, thinking, you're a pussy. No, I was like... <laughs> I think I was just like, get him up. I was talking to Keith Peterson. And I said, get him, like, just get him up. Keep getting him up. Like, you, your, your only chance there is, is me going down there. Like, let's just stay composed and keep getting him up. And last one. Um, the finish, like, looked a little anticlimactic just because, you know, he, he... It was the same thing twice over where he fell from that body kick. Um, do you care at all that it was anti uh, the, the finish wasn't, you know, as spectacular as normal, or is it a finish is a finish? A wise man once said, it doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> I think it was Socrates. <laughs> Thank you.